stock market investing can seem like a very complicated but also interesting idea. It's an excellent way to make more money but a lot of people never get into it due to a lot of misconceptions surrounding investing. Like thinking that you need lots of time and insider knowledge to research companies or that you need thousands and thousands of dollars to even get started with investing. Or people might be scared away by the idea that they might lose all their money or thinking that investing is in the same basket as just gambling or buying a lottery ticket. While all of these things couldn't be further from the truth and throughout the course of this video I'll be talking about the exact steps that I would take if I was just starting on my investing journey from the very beginning. I'll be talking about my favorite brokerage websites, those that will give you access to the best possible companies and the cheapest investing options, some recommendations on which companies to invest into based on your risk tolerance and the amount of gains that you want to make and finally I'll be sharing some helpful resources that you can use to expand your knowledge about the stock market so that you can make more informed decisions with your investing. When people think of investing, there's normally lots of negative connotations associated with it. But in reality, investing is one of the greatest ways that you can improve your financial status. So before you start investing, you're going to need somewhere to actually purchase your shares from. So the place that you buy shares is from a brokerage website. Now in New Zealand, there's three main options for you to choose from. These are Hatch, Sharesies and Stake. Now all three of these have slight differences in terms of the fees that they charge and the types of companies that they allow you to invest into. So with Sharesies you can invest in the American stock market, the New Zealand stock market and also the Australian market as well. Whereas Hatch only lets you invest in the American market and again Stake is also exclusive to the American stock market as well. The one that I personally use is Hatch but depending on which of the three you go with you're not really going to lose out. If you want a detailed breakdown comparing all three of these different websites I'll leave a video linked on screen where I give you a deep dive into each platform and that will help you make a more informed decision on which broker is best for you. But if you are more interested in the American stock market I'd say go with Hatch or maybe Stake and if you're more looking at the Australian and New Zealand market then go with Sharesy. So in order to make an account with one of these platforms you're going to need a few things. Firstly you'll need a proof of identity, either your New Zealand driver's license or your passport and then you'll need a proof of address and this can be verified through a utilities bill like your power or water bill or even a bank statement will do as well. Then you'll also have to provide your IID number just to limit the chances of any fraudulent activity taking place on the broker. So that information will be processed over about a two day period and then you'll be nice and ready with your very own investing account on one of these three brokerage platforms. Just to give you a quick run through of what these platforms look like, they're all quite similar. So as you can see here's Hatch, you can look at the different types of companies that are offered on the stock market, you can have a look over at your portfolio, as you can see I don't have anything invested at the moment and then if you're wanting to actually purchase a company there's a bit of financial info about it like its previous price changes and a nice graph that outlines these over different time points and then there's a few different options in terms of buying your stocks too but again if you want a real good breakdown of how these platforms look again check out that video that I linked on screen and I'll also have it down below in the description box as well. You can see that all these platforms are relatively similar in terms of their layout. Here's a quick look at Sharesies again has all the different companies based on different criteria like the size of the business or the type of company that the business is related to and finally here's a quick look at Stake as well. Again has very similar numerical information for each business and you can log into any of these platforms through your computer or your phone and buying shares can be done in a few seconds. It's a very very easy process to do and if you've ever bought anything online with a credit card you can most definitely understand the process of buying shares on the stock market as well. You don't need three computer monitors or your own personal broker to start investing, it can be done in a few clicks of a mouse and in terms of topping up your account you can do this either through a credit card which is something I'd strongly advise against because there are always credit card fees associated with this you want to just do it through a bank transfer and you just get a unique account number for your stake shares or hatch profile and then you just transfer your money using internet banking and it's the exact same process as if you were just transferring 
one of your friends using internet banking. Now that you have your brokerage account set up, what shares are you going to invest into? When it comes to the stock market, there's two different options for you to choose from. First of all, there's ETFs or exchange traded funds, and then there's individual companies. So starting with ETFs, these are quite common and something that you may have heard of. And essentially an ETF is just an investment vehicle made up of multiple different companies that has a particular goal. So what does that actually mean? Well, there's ETFs that might track a specific commodity in the market, like gold or silver, or a specific sector, like healthcare or new and innovative companies. So in terms of healthcare, there's the ARC Genomic Revolution ETF, which is made up of new and innovative healthcare related technologies and then the ARC Innovation ETF is as the name would describe made up of different innovative companies like Tesla, Square and Roku. Businesses looking at renewable energy or contactless credit card payments that are not the same as a conventional bank and also some ETFs might track the specific performance of an overall country's stock market. So one of the most notable is the S&P 500. This tracks the top 500 biggest publicly traded companies in America and this investment is recommended by some of the biggest investors in the world like Warren Buffett. It gives you an average return of 10% per year and it is made up of some of the biggest companies in the world like Facebook, Google, Tesla, Amazon, all of these giants that have stood the test of time and will most likely remain some of the largest companies in the world. A great part about the S&P 500 is that it's not managed by anyone. All of the companies are just included based on the size of the business so there's no one picking and choosing which companies are going to be held in the S&P 500. So there's no management fees and it's all a very automatic process. The reason why this investment is so popular is because it takes no time or effort on the investor's part. You don't have to spend any of your own time researching companies or looking at what's the best time to buy or sell. You can just dollar cost average into this ETF and see a consistent return of 10% as we said earlier in the video and dollar cost averaging is just investing a consistent amount of money no matter what the market is doing if it's going up or down you might put in 50 to 100 dollars a week month after month year after year always adding no matter what the market is doing and if you do this consistently for several years at a time the returns can be staggering if you look at this compound interest calculator you can see that if you put in 400 dollars a month which is just 100 dollars a week for a period of 33 years at an average return of 10% you will make over $1 million. So you can see the power of compounding and how useful this investment can be. And if you're just getting into investing, I'd say that the S&P 500 is a great starting point for you. The second option that you have is putting your money into individual stocks. So with this, you're going to need to spend some time researching the business so you can make sure that it's actually going to be a profitable and worthwhile investment. So there's a few criteria that you can look at when it comes to selecting a company and picking out if it's actually going to be a worthwhile investment for you. Now these criteria are based on Warren Buffett's investing principles and there's quite a bit to cover in regards to this so it'll make the video far too long if I talk about all of them so I'll leave a video down below in the description from another channel that will give you a detailed breakdown of all of Warren Buffett's criteria for picking an individual company. So in terms of picking between individual companies or exchange traded funds it basically depends on how much risk you're willing to take with your money. With ETFs, your money is spread out amongst multiple companies that make up that ETF. For example, with the S&P 500, your money will be spread out amongst all 500 of those companies, meaning that theoretically you will get a nice consistent return because if some companies in that ETF are doing poorly, others will be gaining value and this will lead to a overall long-term gain on your investment. While this will give you an average return of roughly 10% per year, when it comes to individual stocks, you are at the mercy of the performance of that single business. So your portfolio will likely be a lot more volatile because if all your money is riding on one business, if it has a bad year or isn't performing very well, then your portfolio will also be dropping in value in conjunction with the performance of those companies that you have invested into. But with individual businesses, you can get a far higher return. Traditionally, it's believed that you will get a 15% return from individual businesses, but there can be some which can far exceed this. Your return could be anywhere from 15 to 900%, depending on which company you invest 
invest into. Just looking at Tesla, which has gone up over 2000% in the past few years. So again, it's not a hard and fast rule on how much money you will make from an individual business. But again, it's all based upon your research and the findings that you make from it. The third thing that I would do if I was just starting on my investing journey is listening to a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. This has completely changed my outlook on money and has greatly improved my spending habits. If you're into investing, overall you'll be more interested in money. So this is a great book to get you started. An excellent way to actually digest the information in the book. If you don't have a lot of time in your day to actually sit down and read it, you can get a free copy on Audible when you first sign up and make an account. It'll give you one credit, which essentially means you can buy one book for free. So then you can download Rich Dad Poor Dad for free and just play it in your car when you say driving to work and then you don't have to set aside any of your time to actually listen to the book. This is a strategy that I personally use. I am always listening to new audiobooks about investing in the stock market and I just play them while I'm driving to work. So then it's a very easy strategy and I don't have to physically set any time aside to actually read the book. And you don't really do much in your car anyway when you're driving around except maybe listen to the radio or play some music too. So making that a productive part of your day while consuming some information from an audiobook is a great strategy that I've personally started to use. Rich Dad Poor Dad is something I'd recommend for anyone who's interested in investing or making more money and made me feel a lot more in control of my money as well. It helped me understand the idea that money isn't just made to be spent on material things and just because you have more money doesn't necessarily mean it's going to solve anything for you especially if all you think about is just spending your money once you have it buying bigger and better things and just really leading a lifestyle it's more about consumption instead of using your money productively number four is start allocating about 10 percent of your weekly income towards investing. While that might sound like a lot in the beginning, this is a great benchmark to have. And if you can't quite do 10% per week, just start with maybe 5% and then work your way up to that 10% mark. Personally, I invest about 25 to 30% of my weekly income into the stock market, but that's something you can work towards over time, depending on what financial situation that you have. The most important thing is that you start investing a portion of your weekly income consistently and making it a habit of yours. Once you start putting your money into the market, you'll naturally become more interested in doing it because the more money that you have invested, the greater the return you can make from it. Making 10% on $1,000 versus 10% on $10,000 is a lot more and you'll start thinking of your money as an asset that you can use to generate more income for yourself. Instead of just thinking about money as something to be spent on new cars or clothes, Instead, you'll start thinking of how you can use it in the stock market and the benefit it will have for you if you actually invest it instead of just spending any extra income that you have on material items. Number five is reducing the amount of money that you contribute towards your KiwiSaver. Now, I know this might sound counterintuitive, but let me explain why. Firstly, if you're putting in just 3% into your KiwiSaver, I'd say that's completely fine because depending on which kind of job you have, the employers can match varying amounts. For the majority of jobs, their employer will give you a 3% return. So if you put in 3%, they'll also match that 3% contribution. So theoretically, you're getting a 100% return on that 3% that you invest. If you're in, say, any military job or in the police, then often the employer may match you up to five or even 10% of your contribution. So if you're in that boat with an employer like that, then I'd say definitely you can increase your contribution past that 3% mark. However, the reason I say this is because a lot of people don't really think about investing because they just have the mindset that, oh, I'm putting my money into my KiwiSaver and that's all the investing that I'll do. I don't have the time or the money or the understanding to invest in the stock market. Whereas from all the examples I've given in this video, it couldn't be further from the truth and doing your own investing is very straightforward and very risk-free depending on where you put your money. So if you reduce that dependency on your KiwiSaver and think about how much money that you yourself could make if you were dictating where your money would go or where it's invested and how much better off you'd be if you actually did the investing on your own. Because that return of over $1 million over the 33 year period that I gave earlier in the video is something that has no way of being matched 
from a KiwiSaver scheme. You don't have to think that you'll be better off just leaving it to someone in a KiwiSaver scheme. You know, a mutual fund manager that theoretically has lots of knowledge and experience in the stock market doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to make you a better return. So don't count yourself out and just rely purely on your KiwiSaver for your retirement or for your investing purposes. If you want a complete guide and my personal opinion on KiwiSaver, from which provider is the best, how much should you contribute, and which funds should you allocate your money to, check this video out on screen and it will give you a complete step-by-step -step guide on how to maximize your KiwiSaver and get the best out of it.